another great fight. As I said earlier, I think really one of the standout stars in world boxing right now. We used to call him one of the best prospects in British boxing. Then we moved on to one of the best prospects in world boxing. No longer a prospect. Now, top five in every governing body at 147 pounds. Everybody's talking about Conor Ben, the development, and the, th the fact that he is almost ready to go on and challenge for the world welterweight title. But this man, to my left, has other plans. Chris, welcome. I mean, you, Pete, Peter, um, have just been non-stop. Peter Khan, your manager, asking for this fight for ages and ages. You got the call. We're a couple of days away. You look in fantastic shape. You're ready to take this opportunity. First of all, thank you to everyone. I took the time to be here today. And yes, Eddie, I think I've slid into your DMs a few times <laughs> begging for this fight. And, and all respect to Connor for giving me this opportunity. I have nothing but respect for him. Um, I'm ready for this, you know, this is, I've, I've visioned this, this moment. I've, I was supposed to fight in the UK a couple of times. Thank you, Gavin, Paul McCloskey, it all fell through, but it was always a dream and a vision. I never lost that vision. I always worked hard to be here because I do believe that I, that I have what it takes to still be in that top ten. I, I, I see it. And um, I didn't come here for a paycheck. I didn't come here to, to just to get, to get a fight. I came here for my career. I came here to win. I came here to get my career back on track, get back in that top ten. I do believe in myself and I do believe I have everything it takes to be right back up there. There's been a lot of people that haven't been believers of Conor Ben, but recently coming off Granados and Algeria, people starting to believe that he's a world-class contender. I know you've shown respect to Conor Ben, but you've also said that you don't really rate him as a boxer. You think that he's an emotional fighter, he's dangerous, but but you don't really rate him as a boxer. You believe you're a much better boxer than, than Conor Ben. You stand by that, having watched tape of him. I know you're a very experienced fighter yourself with a great boxing mind, but you believe you're better than this young man. I respect Conor Ben. I believe he's right up there with, with the best. I do believe that. That's why I took this fight, because I want to be comp competitive. And, and if you talk about boxing, I do believe I'm a better boxer than Conor. All around better boxer. He's a, he's like I said, he's a, he's an angry aggressive fighter. He's a fighter. I'm a boxer, and I do believe that that I have the skill to show that I'm a better boxer than Connor. And obviously shared the ring with some great fighters. Your last fight, Jerron Ennis, who may be the best welterweight in the world right now. Yeah. Of course, Errol Spence as well. You, you, you think know, this young man's got a long way to go? No, he's to right. No, he's right up there. He's right up there again. That's why I took this fight, because I was offered a bunch of other fights, way easier fights. But I believe Conor is right up there, and I'm here to test him and see, is he really, really legit? You know, I've been in the ring with, with, with some big names. Let's not forget, and, and I want to touch on this quickly, I'm being judged unfairly for the last NS outing, but no one is talking about the fact that I got that fight on two weeks' notice, two sparring sessions and a weight cut. I took the fight because we were in a pandemic. His, his opponent pulled out. They always know to call me because I'm always ready to fight. And I took the fight, but I'm being fairly judged on that. This is a different story. You guys have treated me fairly, Eddie. Connor's treated me fairly. I got a training camp. You're going to see a different animal. And I've seen quite a lot of South African media here as well. This is a big fight for South African boxing. You know, Absolutely. you don't have the, the major profile fights. Of course, similarities go back to Sugar Boy Malinga beating Nigel Ben back in the day. I know that's a nice sort of a headline to use as well. But not only a big fight for you, but a big fight for South African boxing as well. Absolutely. You know what? This is, this is why I left my country and moved to America because, because we don't have stars. We don't, the kids don't have superstars on a level like this. So the kids in South Africa can dream about, can, can dream about becoming fighters. That's why I left because I want to be on this stage. I mean, we talk about, what are we talking about? Mike Tyson, Francois Botha. That's, that's really the last massive, massive main event we had. So, so this is a big, big, big opportunity for South Africa. Uh, a lot of eyes on me, and uh, I'm proudly South African, and I'm and I'm, I'm and I'm here to 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 do my best. And finally, we know that you know we talk about the emotion of Conor Ben, but yourself as well, with your passing of your father. We know that you're a very tough man, but you're going to be very tough to beat with, with his spirit with you on Saturday night as well. We know how important this fight is for you and him as well on the journey that you shared. Oh, absolutely. You know what? 
I just... I just wish he was here because we spoke about this moment for a long time. I left him for eight years, every birthday, every Christmas, chasing this dream. And then my dad was brutally murdered three years ago. But we did it. We, yeah. So this is, I feel it. This is it. Well, I'm sure he'll be very proud of you. Big moment for you on Saturday night, Connor. Um, again, people talking about, it's an incredible switch almost of, a year ago people talked about, you know, you weren't the real deal, you weren't ready for these guys. Now they look at your opponents and say, oh, he should be in with Mikey Garcia, he should be in with all these guys. You, you're really getting the respect now, and you heard it from Chris as well, as the real deal, as a real welterweight contender, but absolutely no time no place to slip up en route to the World Welterweight Championship. No, listen, people aren't giving Van Herden a chance here, um, which surprises me as being one of the best fighters in, in the game um, of this era. So, you know, for people to be saying, oh, why is he fighting Van Herden? That's a backhanded compliment, really. I mean, you say, show me respect. I mean, they're not really shut. They're trying not to show me respect, but really they are because you wouldn't have put me in this position two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. So, listen, it don't really matter what people think at the end of the day, the progression's real. And, you know, come Saturday night, I show I can deal with anything presented to me. First half pour on paper, you know, I'm ready for that. You know, I love challenges, I thrive off challenges, and, you know, we're here. Let's talk about that South Pole challenge, because as a fighter that's progressing to world level, you need to be ready for all challenges for the World Championship. And, and to go into a World Championship fight fighting a southpaw for the first time would, would be a little bit naive. So very important in this journey to get a southpaw, but also challenging uh, as the first one in your career. Uh, of course, listen, I love challenges. I thrive off challenges and so do all fighters. You know, all compares, all fighters, we all love a challenge, we all get up for a challenge and this is a challenge, a different type of challenge, you know, that I plan on overcoming and, you know, flying with passing colours. This so, man, very experienced, very tough as well, obviously, fighting for, for a lot personally as well. You expect a, a tough test from him. You expect him to be there standing at the final bell, or you believe the ferociousness that you've shown in, in the previous fights, particularly the Algeri fight, will get him out of there? Uh, it don't really matter to me, to be honest. I'm going to go in there and if I see an opportunity, I'm going to take it and try and take him out. Um, you know, he's, he's saying I can't box, which was the headline I believe I read. You know, he's backtracking now. So it's, you know, last time I checked, Algeri got outboxed and knocked out unconscious. So, you know, I, I can do both, ask Sebastian Formella. You know, I've had 13 knockouts out of 20 fights. What are all the rest then? Because I won them quite convincingly. Do you know what I mean? So, listen, he can think what he wants at the end of the day. When I get in there, I'm down to business. And if I see an opportunity, mark my words. If I, if I see a slight opening, I will take it and I will throw everything at him. A slight opening. All, all I've got to see is a little twinge, a little wide twitch, and I'm on him. And obviously, finally fighting in this city, um, which we saw you know, your father do as well, of course, but also incredible to see you boxing all around the country. Genuinely, these days, you see a young fighter who builds in his own hometown, but yourself, you've boxed at the O2, you've boxed at huge stadiums, and now you've headlined in Liverpool last time out and Manchester as well. Like you said, the progression is real, building to not just a big British star, but a big world star and a, a very important fight in a great fight city on Saturday. Do you know what? It's mad, because it's only when you point it out and say it like that that I think, cool, like I'm actually doing all right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like when you say that, it's like, oh, actually, all right. Yeah, Liverpool, now Manchester. It's, um, I mean, it's such a blessing. I mean, who would have thought? And I say this every press conference, but six years ago, you may, I mean, you never, if I told you this, if I sat here and said to you lot, I'm going to be ranked top five, every governing body, I'm going to knock out Jiri out like no one else has, I'm going to knock Vargas out like no one else has, you'd think I'm off my head, wouldn't you? The lot of you. And so would I. And I wouldn't even say it, to be honest. But, you know, I believe hard work and dedication and applying yourself can get you anywhere. Um, you know, I'm so passionate about what I do. Hence, um, Van Herden saying emotional. Ain't, it's not emotional, I just fight with passion. Do you know what I mean? This is what I do. You know, I work extremely hard. And it ain't just me working hard this camp. It's six years of sacrifice to let a moment like this slip between my fingers because I'm overlooking Van Herden because everyone else says I should. He's my world title fight. And I've treated him like he's my world title fight. Well, I know you put the work in. It's going to be a tremendous fight between two great welterweights. 
Britain versus South Africa at the Manchester Arena this Saturday, live on the zone around the world. Great co-main event, Chris Billam Smith against Tommy McCarthy. Alicia Baumgartner defending her WBC and IBO World Championships against Soledad Matisse. Jack Cullen back in the ring, Jordan Thompson, Thomas Whitaker Hart, James Metcalf, Cyrus Patterson, Luke Evans, and of course, Jordan Thompson, who is on the verge of taking out uh, big challenges in the cruiserweight division, and Campbell Hatton following in the footsteps of his dad, which will be a very emotional experience seeing him fight in front of fans at Manchester Arena for the first time. Don't miss a great show. We're going to have head-to-heads down here and all these gentlemen and ladies available for the media after. Thank you. We'll see you Saturday.